program host, Thurl Bailey. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Vivint Smart Home Arena here in Salt Lake City for a special NBA announcement. My name is Thurl Bailey, a proud alumnus and broadcaster with the Jazz, and I'd like to greet all the fans joining us today on NBA TV and live streaming on the NBA and Utah Jazz websites, apps, and social media platforms. You know, Salt Lake City has a palpable heartbeat at this time of the year at the start of a new Utah Jazz basketball season. There's excitement, anticipation, high hopes, and promise. And just when you thought you couldn't be more joyful, we're going to add to what you can look forward to. Vivint Smart Home Arena, which recently underwent a $125 million renovation project, is our community gathering place with more than 120 events annually and as the home of the Utah Jazz. This is a special building in Salt Lake City. We've given out Olympic gold medals to Sarah Hughes and Apollo Anton Ono here. We posted two classic NBA finals between the Utah Jazz and the Chicago Bulls. We've had concerts with the Rolling Stones, U2, and Taylor Swift. In just a few minutes, we will officially hear of another signature marquee event that's coming to Vivint Smart Home Arena and other venues around Salt Lake City. First, allow me to introduce our special guest on the stage, CEO of the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies and past Utah president. Please welcome Steve Starks. <laughs> Serving since 2015 as Salt Lake City's 35th mayor, welcome Mayor Jackie Viskupski. Taking office in 2009 and currently the nation's longest serving governor, please welcome Governor Gary R. Herbert. <laughs> Commissioner of the National Basketball Association, Adam Silver. <laughs> Owner and chairman of the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies, please welcome Gail Miller. Next, to make the official announcement, we welcome to the podium Adam Silver. Thank you, Thurl. It's an honor to be here. And as Thurl just mentioned, it's my honor to announce the 2023 All-Star Game will take place here in Salt Lake City. Let me just add, as, as the governor and I were just discussing, um, big time events and sports are part of the DNA of this state and part of this city. Um, and as Thurl mentioned, so many important NBA events, finals have taken place over the years here. In fact, my very first All-Star game as an NBA employee was in 1993. And so it'll be the 30th anniversary of the NBA All-Star game taking place in Salt Lake City when we come back here in 2023. Let me also just thank the mayor, the governor, Steve, um, Gail. It's a tremendous partnership we have between the city and the state, the Utah Jazz Organization, and the league. And of course, let me thank my colleagues from the league as well. Um, All-Star, as you all know, it started off years ago, even when we were here in 1993, we used to call it All-Star Weekend. I think, and then it was events on Saturday and Sunday. Now it's very much All-Star Week. And as part of that week, and I know part of the commitment from the Miller family to the community is to leave a lasting legacy from our events over the time here we're an all-star. So thank you for that as well. A tremendous amount of work has gone in already for preparing for this announcement today, and a tremendous amount of additional work will go on between now and when the actual game takes place in 2023. So I look forward to being here with all of you and hosting another tremendous event. Thank you again for being here. As the commissioner just mentioned, the return of the NBA All-Star Game to Salt Lake City will be the 30th anniversary of the Jazz hosting in 1993. 
in this building. It was the last All-Star game for Isaiah Thomas, the first for Shaquille O'Neal. Harold Miner won the slam dunk contest, and Mark Price captured the three-point shooting contest. The Western Conference defeated the East 135 to 132 in overtime, as my teammates, Carl Malone and John Stockton, were both awarded MVP honors. You could not have written a better script. Our next speaker was not only an eyewitness to that All-Star weekend, but has had a front row seat to 40 seasons of basketball in Utah. The owner of the LHM Group of Companies and Utah Jazz, Gail Miller. Thank you, Cyril. And thank you, Commissioner Silver. It's wonderful how a few simple words can make us so happy in Utah. It's been an honor for me and my family to serve as stewards of the Utah Jazz for the past 34 years. From the day we bought the team, we considered it a community asset. Our plan has always been to keep the Utah Jazz in Utah. So I've, made, I've taken steps to ensure that that will happen by putting it into trust. But going to the All-Star Game, the 1993 All-Star Game was very exciting for me, for my family, for our fans, and for the whole community. It was an electric and thrilling experience and one that I will always remember. This arena was just two years old. The West won the game. John Stockton and Carl Malone were named co-MVPs, which was fitting. And today, we are honored to welcome the NBA and the All-Star Game back to Salt Lake City. Thank you to our public and private partners who have committed their support to securing this opportunity. It really does take a village. Thank you to the NBA for your confidence in our ability to make the 2023 All-Star Game the best game in experience in the history. Our newly remodeled Vivint Heart Smart Home Arena is designed to enhance the fan experience from top to bottom. At Larry H. Miller, we are committed to excellence. We're proud to accept this opportunity and to prepare an elevated experience for all who participate in it, whether electronically or live. Our mission is to enrich lives. This experience will emerge as the All-Star Game comes to fruition, and it will be one to remember. We live by the principle, go about doing good until there's too much good in the world, and we will use this philosophy as we prepare and execute the 2023 All-Star Game. I'm confident that we will make the local, the national, and the global basketball community proud. Thank you to everyone involved, and go Jazz. If you didn't already know this, the altitude of Salt Lake City is 4,226 feet above sea level. A slogan for the state has been, life elevated. During his time in office, there's been a rise in economic development, educational excellence, and quality of life. Please welcome the governor of Utah, Gary Herbert. Well, thank you, Thurl. We know we're in a basketball arena. The microphones are extra tall. You can't put your feet down on the floor unless you're as tall as Thurl or Adam. Um, but it's a red letter day, and in behalf of that honor, I noticed that Thurl's got a red tie on, I've got a red tie, Adam's got a red tie on, and it looks like we all shopped at the same tie store, because they are very identical. So again, a red letter day for all of us here in Utah, and we're just happy to have this announcement to be made today. Uh, I'm very proud of Utah, uh, probably a little bit of bias as the governor, but Utah has got great people that live here and call it home. Uh, we have a great place to live and to raise families and a great place to do business. We've been named uh, by Forbes magazine six out of the last nine years as the best place, in fact, in America to do business. So we're known around the country and literally around the world as a great place to, in fact, to, to have business to be accomplished. 
but what we're also known as is a great place to have outdoor recreation and kind of sports events. In fact, our slogan is Utah, the state of sport. And it's not just a slogan. It really is a lifestyle. It's a culture. We talked about that, uh, Commissioner Silver and I, beforehand. It is part of our DNA. Uh, and people love sports here in the state of Utah, love to participate, love, love to view and watch others uh, with their excellence and their talents. Outdoor recreation is a part of what we do. We're good at not only uh, that, but we're good at hosting. And I'll just mention some of the things we've done as the state of sport here in Utah. We've hosted, and this is all recent, uh, the Supercross World Finals, the FIS World Ski Championship, the Du Tour Action Sports, the Red Bull Rampage, the Ironman World Championships, Major League Soccer, All-Star Game, of course, the granddaddy of them all, the 2002 Winter Olympics. And we've just been named by the USOC, in fact, to host the Winter Olympics again the next time America has that opportunity, which is probably 2030 or 2034. So hosting sporting events, and again, as mentioned, 26 years ago, we hosted the NBA All-Star Game. So it's, it's great for us to have this opportunity once again to host the world, as it were, here in the great state of Utah. And I echo what uh, Gail has said. You know, we are committed. I see we've got our Speaker of the House, our Senate President here of our legislature, other in the business community. We're committed to make sure that this is the best All-Star Game ever uh, hosted by the NBA any place. We're looking forward to having people come and see what Utah has to offer. And we are grateful to, and we should give a thanks to the Miller family and the Miller organization uh, for what they've done to help put Utah at the forefront in sports with the jazz, what they've done here to make it a part of our, our lifestyle here. And certainly, uh, Commissioner Silver, we want to thank you and the NBA for once again choosing Utah as a place to have the NBA All-Star Game. So we're looking forward to that. We do say go Jazz, but we welcome everybody to come here and participate in this great state. Congratulations to one and all. We thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Some of this will sound a little repetitive because we didn't really compare notes beforehand, but. Um, the NBA All-Star Game is making repeat appearances from 1993 to 2023. Well, we hope to double down again. Our city hosted the Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games in 2002 and has been designated, as the governor said, as a U.S. candidate city for a potential run for the Olympics and Paralympics in 2030. Please welcome Salt Lake City Mayor Jackie Biskupski. Thank you, Thurl. It is a real honor to be here with you, Mrs. Miller. Very proud. So hello, everyone who is watching at home on NBA TV. I'm Salt Lake City Mayor Jackie Biskupski. And on behalf of the residents of Utah's capital city, I must say, welcome back to Salt Lake City. Here in Salt Lake City, we are known as a place who loves to put on an event. We showed that we can do the most of anyone when it comes to our 2002 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games. And those Olympics set the bar quite high for a future games. And we are in large part very excited because the spirit of the Olympics has never left the residents of Salt Lake City or Utah. And as Thurl mentioned, we are ready, willing, and able, as we say, to do it again and be America's choice for a future Winter Games. While we love to ski and skate, at our heart, Salt Lake City is a basketball town. So go Jazz for sure. So you can expect that we will pull out all the stops for the NBA in 2023, and the All-Star Game will be the best ever. With over 6,000 hotel rooms and 200 plus restaurants and bars, including some of the best microbreweries in the country, the secret, of course, being our clean mountain water, there is always something here for everyone in Salt Lake City. In between, on the court action, 
The visitors can also feel a vibrant arts culture scene, high-end shopping, free transit to get around downtown, and undoubtedly a city ready to party with the best in town. Let me assure you, in Salt Lake City, an event like this won't be met with a shrug. It's going to be a slam dunk. Thank you, Mr. Silver, the NBA, and of course, to all the fans, especially my wife and my two sons, Jack and Archie. We look forward to seeing you in 2023. Thank you, Mayor. Future NBA All-Star Games will be played in Chicago in 2020, Indianapolis 2021, and Cleveland in 2022. The Utah Jazz have a proud All-Star tradition with 12 players participating in 43 games. Frank Layden served as the head coach in 1984. Carl Malone was the game MVP in 1989 before sharing the honor with John Stockton in 1993. The Jazz have had their share of rising stars, rookie challengers, slam dunk contest winners, and skill challenge players. Our next speaker is the past president of the Utah Jazz, now CEO of the Larry H. Miller Group of Companies. Please welcome Steve Starks. Thanks, Thurl. Thank you for being here today. An event of this magnitude doesn't happen without the help of a lot of people, and we're very grateful for all of those people who have participated and worked hard for the last two years on this project. I also want to recognize some, some people that are in attendance today. First of all, we want to recognize Greg Miller, who's the governor for the Utah Jazz and member of the Larry H. Miller Board of Directors. Thankful that Greg is here with us today. We also have with us Steve Miller, who's the vice chair of the Larry H. Miller Board of Directors, Brian Miller, his wife, Heather Don. I'm grateful for other members of the Miller family that are with us as well, Karen, Adam, and Zane. And we have two members of our board of directors, Steve Albrick and Denny Haslam. Thank you for your attendance and support through this process. We have several elected officials who have been tremendous partners as we've worked on this together. We have the Lieutenant Governor, Spencer Cox, who not only is one of the biggest jazz fans uh, that you'll ever meet, but also has been a huge help throughout this process. We have the Utah Speaker of the House, uh, Brad R Wilson. We have the Senate President, Stuart Adams. We have Salt Lake County Mayor Jenny Wilson. Thank you for your support and attendance. And our friends from the Utah Sports Commission, the State Office of Tourism, Visit Salt Lake, and the Downtown Alliance have all been tremendous partners as, as we prepared and made our, our bid. We have with us members of our front office, including the President of Utah Jazz and Larry H. Miller Sports Entertainment, Jim Olson, Dennis Lindsay, Executive Vice President of Basketball Operations, Justin Zanuck, our general manager, and David Morway, our, our assistant general manager. Uh, I also want to just pause and thank uh, two people who have really made this event happen from within the Utah Jazz and our organization. That's Don Sterling and Carrie Holt Larson, who have done incredible work. Please give them a round of applause for their, their leadership. Uh, we're honored to have all of you here today as our special guests in this powerhouse lineup that we've seen today. Uh, we are excited to bring the All-Star Game back to Salt Lake City and to Utah. As you've seen, we have civic and community and business partners that are engaged, committed to making this a very spe special and memorable experience. We're really proud to be in the renovated Vivint Smart Home Arena. Gail and I were just talking that when we started this project three or four years ago, this was exactly the type of event that we hoped would come back because of this beautiful arena. Uh, one of the most innovative and tech-friendly and guest-friendly arenas in the NBA and in the world. With the close proximity of the Salt Palace Convention Center, the Huntsman Center as facilities, NBA fans from all over the world are going to enjoy a dynamic downtown atmosphere when they're here for the All-Star Weekend. We know that this will be the ultimate experience for basketball fans, global viewers, visitors, and certainly our local community. It is a symbolic of Utah's heritage of hard work and innovation and we couldn't be more excited. Thank you for your support. Today marks an important milestone for the Jazz, our city, and our state. The hard part is that we have to wait three and a half more years for the NBA All-Star Game to be held 
here in Salt Lake City. But to mark the occasion, all of our participants will now step forward on center stage for a special presentation and photo opportunity. We also want to invite Greg Miller, the Jazz representative on the NBA Board of Governors, and Jim Olson, president of the Utah Jazz, to join us on stage. Jeremiah Jensen, KSL TV. My question's for Commissioner Silver. As you considered the bids for 2023, what was it about Salt Lake City's bid that stood out among the rest? A, a few things stood out. One is the longevity of the Miller family in the NBA. That's certainly a consideration. Um, Greg and I talk all the time. I think uh, the, the particular um, bid was incredibly thorough and, and well done. I think, again, um, it's something Gail and I have talked a lot about as well. It's the tradition of hosting big events and sporting events in Salt Lake City. And I think, frankly, the, the final piece was the renovation that Steve talked about to this arena, at which puts it in the top tier of arenas anywhere in the world. So I think the combination of all those things made it a very easy decision for the league to come back here. Next question. Right in the middle. We'll see. Ben Anderson, KSL Sports. Steve, uh, does the arena need any future renovations before the game is being hosted? We don't see any major renovations that need to be done. We, uh, the goal when we started that process was to return it to first class within the league and within the world, and we certainly accomplished that. There's always going to be capital invested in the arena to keep it uh, at the front edge of innovation and, and make it a great experience for our fans. And, but we don't see anything that's, that's critically missing. There will just be ongoing maintenance and upgrades as we go. Next question. Third row, three in, to from the left. Ben Dowsett, Forbes Sports. Uh, Gail, what does this recognition for your franchise mean to you, as you say, one of the stewards, uh, longtime stewards of this franchise? For me, it's a, a recognition of the dedication that we've had to the sport of basketball and what it means to our community. It, it's fulfilling for all of those who have followed us and been participating as we've built the sport in Utah, and we're grateful that we've, we've been able to uh, accommodate our fans and to bring this sport to you, to, or to bring the All-Star Games. So it's very satisfying. Next question. Um, way in the back where the TV risers are, right in the middle. Hi there, Jason Wynn with ABC4 News. Have you guys looked at the economic numbers that are going to come into our city for these restaurants and area businesses around Vivint Smart Home Arena? I mean, anyone can answer that. Yeah, I, I, well, I have not done any calculating, I'm sorry. Um, but we do know that an event of this size is something that our city is capable of hosting and hosting very well. And we also know that the impact will be in the millions, it, but I don't know exactly where. Uh, our estimation is it's probably between 45 and $50 million in impact. Uh, we will not only host America, as people see what takes place, and of course the All-Star Game is one of the premier events in sports, but the world will be watching too. Uh, we've had the experience of the Olympics, so we know how to do that. But the economic benefit and what it will ripple through the economy is significant, like, say, close to $50 million. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Enjoy the game tonight.